What's going on guys? It's the Beastly Gamer here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to jailbreak your PlayStation Vita or your PlayStation TV. This is actually my PlayStation TV. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to jailbreak it now. So the first thing you want to do is in the actual browser on the system, you want to go to the Hinkaku website. And uh, there will be a link in the description. The one thing about this jailbreak is if you completely power down your Vita or your PlayStation TV, you have to go back to this website and click this install button once again. So what you do is you click install. You're going to get a disclaimer telling you that you're basically voiding your warranty, which really shouldn't be an issue uh, if you're really into the jailbreaking scene. And what you do is continue on. Go ahead with the install and another screen is going to pop up. And once the screen pops up, what you want to do is stop JavaScript on the page. You want to go up there and scroll to that, click it, and then you hit OK. And then your Vita or your PlayStation TV will do something spectacular. Right before your eyes, the Molecule uh, website will jailbreak your Vita. And it works as long as your Vita has power, which is really great. And it makes your Vita standard once you power off your Vita. So it really makes, it's like a win-win situation. Uh, this mod does not entail uh, downloading any jailbroken Vita games, at least not for the moment, or PSP games. This is mostly for homebrew applications, homebrew games, and emulators. And so once you do that and you see it completely finished, you're going to go to your home screen and go to the Molecule, which is a new pop-up. Go there, and this is how you're going to actually transfer files. That's that's what the Molecule app is for. Once you get here, on the Vita, you can either tap... On the Vita, you tap the touchpad. On the PS uh, TV, you tap Select, and it'll open up your FTP server. And what you want to do is transfer files to the very bottom file there. It's UX0. Uh, and basically, that is where you want to transfer any jailbroken applications, uh, and emulators, they work straight from there. You can install them there. There will be a link in the description uh, for you guys to go and find these applications. But once you do it, uh, you, you'll you basically be in a whole new world with your Vita. One of the things I really loved about my PlayStation Portable was uh, all that extra time I spent playing uh, my emulators on there. The, the PSP had a really, really robust um uh, jailbreak scene or hacking scene and there was lots and lots of people creating applications for it creating homebrew games and of course tons and tons of emulators and so this is brand new for the Vita most of the emulators and games like you see here Doom this is actually a PC uh, port of Doom running on the PlayStation Vita lots of this stuff uh, really is the PSP versions because the Vita really has been virtually unhackable uh, up until this moment in time and I would say until at least we find out what's going to happen with Hinkaku in the future, I would not update my Vita if I were you past 3.60, at least until we see what they're going to come up with. And this thing works really, really good. Here's a Super Nintendo game running on my PlayStation TV. Uh, I have I've loved my Super Nintendo. It's one of my favorite consoles of all time. And as you can see, it runs pretty good. Like I said, it's not perfect. Uh, I think this emulator runs a lot better on the PSP than it does on the Vita because it's not actually made for the Vita. But if you're really into old school games and you got, you know, that emulator rush, you want to play games on your emulator, this really, you can't go wrong here. Uh, and like I said, I got a Sega Genesis on mine. I got a Super Nintendo. I got a Game Boy. I got a GBA Game Boy Advance. And uh, I got the Vita Doom game, which is like the very first uh, Doom game, or the very first homebrew game uh, for the Vita that's actually made for the Vita, and it works pretty damn well. Uh, and like I said, this really doesn't seem to uh, hurt your Vitas at all. You know, Vitas, for the most part right now, aren't getting a ton of play. They aren't getting a ton of action. <laughs> so most of the time, if people are even playing their Vitas, they're playing one or two games is not really, you know, a ton of games on the Vita that people are playing right now. And this just gives it a ton more replayability, just a lot more games that you can play and enjoy. Here's a Game Boy Advance emulator with one of the first GBA games I actually bought, uh, Super Mario Advance. And it works pretty damn good. Uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with the fact that this is the PSP emulator running on the Vita and it still works pretty good. I'm probably more excited to see what happens with the future of this thing as far as uh, developers and indie developers out there making things for the Vita and, you know, uh, 
commissioning their own emulators to work on the Vita. I think it's a really exciting time, <laughs> finally, to be a Vita owner. So you guys let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions about this uh, this exploit, I'll answer your questions in the comments below. Uh, I'll also drop some links for you guys if you want to get some of these uh, emulators and jailbreak or jailbroken applications. You guys let me know if you like the uh, jailbreak for the Vita. Hope you do. Leave a comment. Definitely give a thumbs up and show support for the channel. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.